It's election season, boys and girls, and democracy is at stake. The Righteous Party of Hades has been gaining influence, and mysterious unnamed transactions have been added to your account. Of course, money isn't all that wins elections. You're gonna have to put in effort. State-enforced homosexuality. Mass voter fraud destroyed ballots in the removal of a certain group of voters who may or may not be responsible for all the country's problems. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. Of course, there's no such thing as coincidence. But if someone testifying against you goes missing, it's an accident that can't be traced back to you. But if by some strange chance it is, you might find yourself in a sticky situation. The Sky 4 is a game that needs no introduction for fans of the series. It's a lot of people's favorites, and it's not too hard to see why. I beat the fuck out of my dick so goddamn hard that I can't even feel my left leg. My left leg has went totally numb. To say that the game preceding it was unpopular on release would be an understatement, and I will not be covering it. I will say, however, that Disgaea 3 was just okay. Not bad, not good, just sort of mediocre. When I talk to people about the series, I've tended to notice that either 3 or 4 is their entry point, so you may be curious as to what changed from 2 to 4. Well, absolutely fucking everything, that's what. Magic change, monster fusion, a new skill system, new classes, abilities, this political map, they basically took everything, absolutely everything about the game and changed it significantly. So a brief recap on the kind of game that this is is I got real caught up on talking about the things I love about this guy too in my last review. So some details were neglected. This guy has always been a really extreme series with pretty unique mechanics. For, for instance, you can pick up your allies and you can only throw in the cardinal directions, but if you time it just right, you can throw diagonally. You can move your allies around on the map, but movement isn't final until after you've used your action. So you can move characters into the range of healing spells, then cancel your movement but retain the effects of the spell. The game actively wants to make you feel like you're cheating, abusing glitches to get ahead. And it's that mentality that elevates this series from being just another strategy RPG to giving its own identity. And so, when I heard Disguise 4 was the best game in the series yet, I immediately picked it up, fresh off the hype of one of the greatest game trailers ever created. Level 9999, 100 million damage, no problem, no problem! Take a dump on the face of common sense! This is Disgaea 4! Consensus seemed to be that Disgaea 4 fixed every issue 3 had and improved on it massively, and that it cured cancer, parted the Red Seas, and reigned in a new era of peace on Earth. And I hated it. At every turn it felt like the game was fighting me, trying its best to stop me from enjoying it. I felt like it was even worse than Disgaea 3, with very little being changed. I quit it before I even beat the story, and that was probably a mistake, because the game doesn't even start until you beat the game. With so many people praising it, it was hard for me to see why, but uh, luckily, replaying through the game, my opinion has changed considerably, although I still have a lot of mixed feelings on a lot of the changes. Let's, uh, let's talk about the story. It's my least favorite part of the game, and even with all of the improvements added to the Vita port, it still stands as the weakest link of the entire experience, and I wanted to skip it the whole way through, but I didn't. I didn't, for the sake of this review. Now, I know that these guys can write good stories, and this, this doesn't even come close for even a moment. I'd say that it's the worst story in the series, but uh, that would require me to pretend Disgaea 5 doesn't have a post game. Now, at least with Disgaea 4, it doesn't try to come up with a legitimate reason for me to have Gig, destroyer of fucking worlds in my party. You're not going to find Disgaea 4 trying to rationalize war crimes and parasite. Unfortunately, the actual dialogue, you know, past the first few chapters, is just all over the place, and it made every scene drag on for way too long. Primarily because whenever something happened, Every single character just had to open their mouth. Now, the other games have scenes like this, but the first three games have what I would call the main trio, you know, a group of three people who are actually relevant to the plot, and everyone else is just kind of not. 
Sky 4 threw that all out the window and made it so that the, the unimportant side characters won't shut the hell up. This is particularly annoying with Fuka, as she pads out many of the scenes with absolutely nothing of value to say. If I could remove even just one character from this game, it would be her. Most of the other characters are solid, and the voice actor for Valvatores heavily carries what is otherwise an incredibly forgettable main character. He really has fun with the role, and reading over the dialogue, I realized that his character typically wasn't actually saying anything interesting or funny, but the voice actor was really bringing him to life, constantly trying to make the audience love him. If not for this man, I'd be bored to tears. The only problem that I have with his performance is actually an issue with the audio, because uh, for a majority of scenes, even on like the lowest audio settings, uh, the music is way too high. Alright, there we go. I got most of my big complaints out of the way. SHUT THE FUCK UP! So, if you don't mind, I'm going to start talking about all the stuff I do like about this game, because uh, trust me, there's a lot. Welcome to New Veldheim. Come for the corruption. Stay because we'll blow your legs off if you try to leave. All is for my lord. And nothing says corruption quite like the court system. What other game allows you to legally force a woman to wear a swimsuit? What other game makes it harder to reverse that decision? That's right, this guy of four is a champion of women's rights. This guy of four takes place in a dystopian future where voting doesn't matter because if a demon votes nay on your bill, it is your moral obligation to break his kneecaps. As always though, the best features in this game are actually from this guy D2. Now you can rain money down onto the Senate and pass any bill you want. Thanks. The moment you finish the story though is the moment that the training wheels finally come off. The cheat shop was added to Disguise D2 and it makes a return in the enhanced port. And it's more or less one of the only things that made me keep playing the game. Whereas most methods of progression are so shrouded in mystery that I have to look up a guide for each and every single one. The cheat shop is simple, straightforward, and it doesn't make me want to die. You defeat challenges, you get more points, and you exploit the game harder. Steadily, you begin unlocking these evil symbols that add even more features to the game. You place them on this political map and you place units around them and gain sick ass effects. Now most of them kind of suck, but uh, a lot of them are also pretty awesome such as the EXP and mana related symbols. Now with these symbols, you can fuse together two monsters. Damn boy, he fit! And they can also become a weapon and grant the user special weapon techniques based on what character it is. But on top of that, with the power of evil symbols, you can turn a gigantic monster into a weapon and you can get even more range on those techniques. And even further on top of that, you can dual wield them? Now you can attack twice with the two big ass weapons with massive attacks that decimate fields. Even better is that the EXP gained is distributed at a 100% rate rather than the 50% that it used to be. And now five party members or more can share the exact same amount of experience and even more can get a fraction of that passively without even participating. Now unfortunately, they couldn't just add a bunch of cool shit. They changed a lot of the core functions to complement new changes, but a lot of it just isn't very good. If I had to sum up the issues fast, I'd say that a lot of the new changes remove something from the early game and make it a chore to do in the post game. I ran through item world close to a dozen times before I finally looked up why I had only encountered the senate once or twice. Now I don't have any statistics or percentages and it's possible that I just got unlucky. I mean it certainly happens in Disgaea too, albeit pretty rare. <laughs> However, do you want to know why the raid is so low? It's because of the radar symbol that they added. Even examining the symbol doesn't mention boosting the encounter rate at all, but if you put your units around it, suddenly the, the rate just skyrockets. And admittedly, it's a better rate in the long haul. Shit like this is littered throughout the game, as if they just expected you to know. And that's the bulk of the new content for you. I mean, just talking about it, I almost feel like I have Stockholm Syndrome or something. I mean, I like a lot of the ideas, but I hate that none of it is explained. Really, nigga? And even less of it is implemented cleanly. 
People complain about far less in the other games, but somehow this has gotten a free pass despite the regression. You have a handful of things that are never explained proper in Disgaea 1 and 2, but they were always nice optional features. And even with my biggest gripe in Disgaea 2, the one that everyone complains about the most, you know, that one, it pales in comparison to the shit that you do in Disgaea 4 without any sort of guidance. I almost don't even want to mention my other gripes, I don't want to complain about video games. I really just want to talk about all the stuff that I enjoyed. I do like this game, but I can't even talk about all the changes without coming off as a bitchy whiner. I keep cutting out segments where I complain about the game and rewriting them. I mean, this, this script has undergone like something like five rewrites, so fuck it. Here's a comprehensive list of every complaint I have about the game, except for one, which we'll get into in a moment. All you ever do is complain! Okay, that's enough. So you might be thinking, at this point, why even review a game if you don't like it? And... I don't actually dislike this game. Crazy, I know. So, for those of you who might not even know what this guy is even about, does any of the crap that I just mentioned even matter? Well, yes and no. I cannot recommend this game to anyone trying to get into the series. For me, Disgaea 4 is unironically the game that gets better after 50 hours of gameplay. It's probably at this point that I should mention that I love this game in spite of its flaws. For every single thing that this game does wrong, it does at least something right. There was always something magical waiting for me. The charm of the character creation, all the dialogue not involved in the story, base building, the list goes on. So you might be wondering, what could this last complaint possibly be? What's so important about it that it has to be segregated from the list, like this is the 1900s? Well, getting into the land of carnage sucks. Look, I know I already covered this in my last review. If anything, with everything that I know now, it's a sign that you can't rely on other people to create your instruction manual for you. And that's even more true now. According to everyone who enjoys the endgame of Disgaea 4, if Disgaea 2 was released today, that issue that I mentioned of bashing your head against the wall for hours would not exist, because there'd just be a proper guide for it. So now I have to wonder, how in the hell has this gotten in the past? Because this is some ESP shit. Don't believe me? Allow me to educate you on exactly the kind of bullshit that you have to go through. Cause uh, it's something else for sure. So in order to unlock the land of carnage, you have to level up your characters to the point that they're at least level You assign them to this evil symbol that allows you to capture, capture monsters. monsters just yet. Well, wait, you have to make sure that each monster has that you have here capture. unlocked. No, you exactly also have to which use specific guy. monsters that you oh, need into to the base town, and then you interrogate them. Treasure, them. treasure map out of them that's actually the one that you go to a... And if you're lucky, if you are what you want, you need all the Flanzer pieces, alternate pieces or anything else the like that. Series of the Flanzer shit. Doing these stages you need repeatedly, capturing the enemies, enemies. And trust me, you're gonna be here you for need a while. To clear forty percent of the Dimension X map. To and I sure get hope that you can do it. Admittedly, isn't even that difficult anymore. Cause they made it. Did you get all that? Okay, now imagine that a good chunk of the game is like that. The game is constantly punching me in the nuts and then apologizing to me with roses the next day. And much like an abused spouse, I still love this game. For every curveball that this game threw at me, I just I just kept going and as I did I learned more about the game. And for every mistake that it made, it made an improvement. This game could be so much better, sure, but I mean, it's still this guy, damn it, and this is a game where you do outrageous levels of damage. Every single oh, challenge that this game I'm threw at me. Yeah, sure, I might have taken a low blow, but I didn't just hit the game back. I curb stomped this game into the fucking ground, and I didn't stop. I started learning the tricks, reading up on guide after guide, and something... Something just clicked. This game is designed to beat your ass. This is a top or beat top world. And god damn it, I'm no one's bottom. I showed this game who's the boss of this gym, and I just never stopped. The insane amount of options that this game has are absolutely staggering. And that was definitely the best part of the game. I may have understated how absolutely amazing it is to be able to make anyone you want into a god. Before playing this game, I absolutely hated the idea of the abilities. I hadn't really looked into the strengths they had, and I just felt that they were completely underwhelming. 
This game didn't just sell me on the idea. It made me an avid believer. There is nothing as satisfying as creating an absolute speed demon that can clear any floor of the item world. Not only does Prayer have a massive magic change AoE when she's a gigantic weapon, but she has a passive that allows her to move again when she kills with a normal attack. If you equip her with a soggy second passive, she gains the ability to fly, which means that she can move through units. Add on to that, a passive that doubles normal attack damage, and you have a killer unit that can plow through the item world at max speed. Fast as fuck, boy. And it doesn't just stop there. God forbid it stop the there. Best. Building up all of my characters was just great. Initially, all of them were just weak. Bottom of the barrel, piss poor units. But if there's anything that this game excels at, it's allowing you to keep any unit up to snuff. I had a large squad of characters that I could just roll out at any point in time. My top five were my mage, Jester here, Prayer, Gig, and Desco. And ultimately, I took all of them and more to fight ball. I suppose that I should say that it isn't the destination, but the journey that is so fun about this guy for. It's the way that it feels, it's the new additions, it's feeling like I outsmarted the system. It's duplicating hundreds of items through legitimate in-game methods to get dozens of stacks of statisticians and hitting level 9999 on 5 characters in a single map clear, an experience that would normally take 30 minutes or so, just cut down to 30 seconds with the proper setup. And how? Because of my own actions, because I worked for it, because there was always something to do and aim for. This game has clear goals the whole way through, and the game constantly throws new bullshit at you. And you can be smart, and you can roll with it, or you can just overcome it with sheer numbers. I spent countless hours building up a group. I took on challenge after challenge, and I bent the game over and I slapped it on the ass. I beat the optional final boss and that's not even something that I normally do. And I'm just done with the game. There's still more to do, sure, but it's like scraping at the bottom of the barrel for your grind high. You're not, you're not gonna get much, it's not satisfying, and that's why I've never maxed out aptitudes in any of these games. Most everything else is great, it's so good, and I know that a lot of people are going to focus on the negatives that I've said, but at the end of the day, this is still this guy, and while I don't agree with every change made, I'm happy that they decided to try new things, even if I don't like everything. It's the trial and error that creates staples and wonderful additions to the rest of the series. I do like this game a lot, and I hope that my feelings on the game find you somehow and even convince you to give it a shot, especially if you were in a similar position as I was with the game. But, if you're new to the series, I advise that you play the other games first. Keep my biases in mind, as this is only my advice. I'm not an objective reviewer, and I never will be. I'm gonna call the review here. There's honestly not too much more to say other than thank you for watching. I appreciate the feedback that you guys leave on my videos, and it's really what keeps me going. So if you have anything to say, let me know. And if you're interested in the game, it's likely to go RIGHT NOW! THE GAME'S ON SALE! RIGHT NOW! BUY IT NOW! Feel free to check out the Discord if you want to see what I'm up to, or just talk about cool video games. I appreciate you all, thanks for watching, and stay safe. Alright, so I just need a few more of these maps and I'm done. You didn't have to cut me off! Like rap. I can never have to know we were nothing! I don't even need your love, but you treat me like a freak! I'm gonna have to get a soul up!